Howdy, and welcome to On The Move. I'm Chelsea Reber, and today I'm visiting with Dr. Deanna Kennedy. Dr. Kennedy, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about yourself and how you came to be here at Texas A&M in the Department of Kinesiology and Sport Management. Okay, I started my career here at Texas A&M in 2003. I was an instructional faculty in our physical education activity program. Uh, I went on to get my PhD uh, in kinesiology with a focus on motor neuroscience. Um, and then 2015, I uh, took an assistant professor position here. And just this semester, I was promoted to associate a uh, professor with tenure. Well, congratulations. Thank on you. The thank you. Now, when I hear PAP, I always think of the classes. So, did you teach any of the classes? I did. Gymnastics was my main area, oh, but I okay. taught a lot of different things like yoga and archery and strength training. Did you have a background in gymnastics? Uh, I did not. I was certified to teach gymnastics um, and there was a need, so uh, I did it. Okay, awesome. Very cool. So you just won the Community Impact Award. Another congratulations is in store. Oh, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about your work that got you that award? Sure. So uh, I teach uh, motor behavior courses for undergrad and graduate students. And in that class, uh, I partnered with the Robert Conti Foundation for Parkinson's Disease and Movement Disorders. And they needed help with their program. So they were teaching boxing to individuals with Parkinson's. They call them fighters because they're fighting Parkinson's disease. And um, I developed a, a project where my students go in and they teach motor skills to the people with Parkinson's. Parkinson's. And um, it really helps my students in terms of professional development, real world experience, but it also gives the fighters an opportunity for community engagement and an opportunity to work on their physical movement skills. So uh, I was nominated and won that award and I, I, I love the program. I want to take a step backward a little bit. What got you interested in this field of study to begin with? I was an athlete, right? So movement was always a, a huge focus for me, um, but I had a pretty significant injury in gymnastics. So I dislocated my knee um, and I ended up being on crutches for about 10 months. Oh my gosh. And walked with a cane for another six months, 19 months of physical therapy. Um, and so I was really interested in that neurorehabilitation, which coupled with my interest and background in athletics and kinesiology. Um, so that kind of led me into motor neuroscience. So definitely a personal attachment. Yes. To that. Yes. Okay. Can you tell us about your research on the effects of altered gravity environments on the neural control of human movement? Sure. So my research in general is focused on bimanual coordination. So that's just using your two hands together to accomplish a task goal, right? So tasks like buttoning your shirt or tying your shoes, uh, driving a car or landing a spacecraft involves some type of coordination between the limbs. Uh, now within this domain, I'm particularly interested in multi-frequency patterns. Okay. What is that? And exactly. so can you tap three times with one hand while you tap two times with your other hand oh, simultaneously? Okay. Yeah. So this is multi-frequency okay. rhythms. Go ahead, try it. I know. I was going to say, okay. And then, okay. Yeah, and, and it's hard. <laughs> yes. And um, unless you're a skilled musician, right? Mm, doing that type of which task. Which I am not. <laughs> <laughs> but doing that type of task is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Now, why it's difficult is we have a signal from the brain saying tap three times. And a signal uh, to the other hand saying tap two times. And those signals interfere with each other. Mm. So it makes doing tasks that involve different actions for the hands difficult, right? Like tapping your head and rubbing your belly. Right, yeah. So in my research, though, I use a type of feedback called Lisaju displays. Okay. And this integrates information from the left and right limb into a single point. So a lot like playing a video game. Right? Yeah. You have one avatar on the screen, mm -hmm. and you control it with two thumbs. Okay. Right, And so if you ask someone playing a video game, what button did they push when, usually it's difficult for them to do that. Mm -hmm. But when I give people doing these complex bimanual tasks, tasks that were once thought difficult or impossible to do, they can do it in a few minutes of practice. So that's my overarching research. But from the NASA perspective, right, how do these brain signals differ in altered gravity environments? And plus, can we use tools and techniques like Lisa Jude displays 
to counter the motor impairments that happen in microgravity. Okay. So I understand why you got involved in this field of study, but then to take it a step further, literally into space, where did that interest come from? I got lucky with that one. Okay. Right? Well, I think in general, everyone's interested in space, sure. right? Like you hear about it and it's cool. Such an unknown world for right. most of us. Right. And so uh, in aerospace engineering, they temporarily set up a laboratory in uh, the building I was working on here in uh, campus, the okay. Human Clinical Research Facility. And I was just curious about what their machines did. And I'm like, oh, we can do something with that. And then that led us to submit a NASA grant that was uh, funded on the first try. And so that's how it got started. And the funding took me in the direction, and I absolutely love it. Okay, so I heard that you got to take a special trip and actually experiment with NASA. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, and so our grant, I have it with uh, Anna Diaz Artilles in aerospace engineering and Bonnie Dunbar, who's a five time astronaut. Yes, I've heard of her. Okay. I've actually, I haven't got to meet her, but I've seen her at an event before, and yeah, that's wild. Yeah, very and cool. So we went to. Bordeaux, France, that was tough. That's right. also cool. <laughs> um, to do a zero G flight, which okay. is also called a vomit comet. Vomit comet. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> Right. Yes, I've heard of this. Okay, yes. so you did this? I did this where the airplane goes straight up and then straight down in a series of parabolas. Uh-huh. How was it? It was fantastic. I loved it. I didn't get sick. Everyone <laughs> good, asked good. that question. Uh, yeah, and so I did 93 parabolas, actually. Wow. What does somebody normally do? Uh, it just depends. I okay. mean, um, in the NASA world, everyone keeps track of how many they have done. So doing 93 the first time, I think, is a high number. Yeah, sounds like it. Okay. Yeah. They ready to put you up in space? <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> That's awesome. So what, was there anything else um, with that particular experience that you learned or that you were able to bring back for your research? So right now we're still analyzing the data. So okay. I think it's going to drive our research for a very long time. Um, but uh, the preliminary data, what we're seeing is really interesting. And one of the things that I see is there's less neural interference in terms of bimanual task in some of these altered gravity environments, which may have some interesting repercussions um, for rehabilitation research. Okay. Like, can we use altered gravity as a rehabilitation tool? If you want to learn more about the kinesiology and sport management program, check out the link in the description below. So what is the student involvement like in your research? Well, even on this parabolic flight campaign, I was able to take two PhD students from kinesiology, so Madison Weinreich and Nathan Keller. Um, and they were um, the only students really involved, or our team was the only group that brought students to this parabolic flight. So think about that as a student to be able to go on a vomit comet it was a great experience. <laughs> you keep selling this like it's a positive thing. It, <laughs> yes, it is. I love it. Right. But in general, I try to involve students at all levels of my research. So okay. typically I take on several undergraduate students for help with collecting data. And if they're interested and have time, perhaps doing an independent project. I also do the same with master's students and PhD students. So independent projects, thesis this dissertation work. Okay, excellent. You have already kind of talked about what excites you, and I can tell that you're very passionate about this, and especially with A&M's involvement with NASA and the connection there, what excites you about the future of this research? Well, in addition, like, of course, all the doors opening with NASA, and I think yeah. it's going to be a huge part of my career as I move forward, but I also have interest in the Parkinson's rehabilitation uh, research, and I have a couple of really exciting projects coming up with that. And one, um, and we're gearing up to start um, this semester or next semester, actually, mm -hmm. and that's doing hippotherapy with Parkinson's patients. So hippotherapy is a physical therapy or occupational therapy that uses horses. Okay. I was going to say hippos. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Everyone Close. thinks that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. But horses, horses is still pretty cool. Yeah. But getting, getting the uh, Parkinson's fighters up on the horse to help with balance and gait. Um, and so I'm very excited about that and the opportunities it brings for my students too. Yeah, that's very cool. How has the kinesiology and sport management department influenced your research capabilities? Oh, so 
Most specifically, um, I recently got a kinesiology and sport management seed grant. And my goal, and I already talked about this, is to uh, combine my two interest areas. That is using altered gravity for Parkinson's rehabilitation. Mm. Um, And so having that extra funds will uh, really help Um, stimulate and move that line of research forward. And we're going to do that research on the brand new aerospace engineering uh, human centrifuge that is housed in the human clinical research facility. Okay. You've got so much at your disposal here. It It, it is right. Yeah. Yeah, You don't really have to, I mean, you can travel to France if you get a chance to, but to have so many tools um, at your disposal here at Texas A&M, that's got to be a great opportunity. It is. It's, it is. Yeah. What advice would you give to any students who may find themselves interested in the kind of research you're conducting um, or students who may just be interested in kinesiology and the study of movement and the study of the human body? Well, my advice to students would be to follow their passion, right? But get involved or engaged in as many career building professional opportunities as they can. So for example, doing independent research projects or volunteering at relevant organizations such as Rocksteady Boxing, Special Olympics, Senior Olympics. Um, And these experience not only enhances knowledge, right? But gives you uh, important skills and networks for a successful career in Canadian kinesiology and sport management. I have a feeling that somebody who's been diagnosed with Parkinson's that obviously is a very tough diagnosis to receive and to understand. How have you experienced or what has your experience been like with people with Parkinson's? Do you find that they are willing to to undergo this research and to kind of be a part of the research that you're conducting? Or is there sometimes some pushback? Is it hard to find people who are interested in being part of this? So another great opportunity I have uh, here at a and is that I partnered with the Rocksteady Boxing and the Robert Conti Foundation mm-hmm. for Parkinson's Disease and Movement Disorders. So it's a gym here in College Station um, that teaches movement skills or uses movement to fight Parkinson's disease. So the individuals engaged there are already interested in using exercise as a therapeutic tool. And that's what research is showing, that movement is the best medicine. It slows the progression of the disease. So overall, in general, I've found people are very motivated to help in this research. Excellent. Dr. Kennedy, is there anything else that you would like to share with us today? I think I covered it all. You did. Yeah. It's incredible stuff that you're involved in. Very exciting. And again, congratulations on all of the achievements that you have had recently. Thank you. And thank you for having me. All right, Dr. Kennedy, thank you so much. And thank you for listening. Make sure to like and subscribe and learn more about the kinesiology and sport management department at the links in the description. Thank you for listening to On The Move. You can catch our episodes while you're on the move by going to Spotify, Apple, or Google. And to learn more about the Department of Kinesiology and Sport Management, head to knsm.tamu.edu.